Uh, what opportunities does fintech uh, offer in terms of developing a truly uh, a single digital financial services market? I think the pressure is on banks to um, offer digital payments. Um, so what are the opportunities, what opportunities does, does fintech present to banks? Yeah, I mean, I think the first thing, the speed of change is, is so rapid now. And I think banks, banks have, have come to the realization that they have to change because if they don't, other companies will just come and take their customers. So there are huge areas of opportunities. I think a lot of people only think about customer facing or front facing opportunities, but there are additional opportunities for fintech companies to provide services, whether it's on artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning, um, data science, etc., which can help you make better decisions on the back end, which is not necessarily visible to the front end. So I think that's one aspect. I think the other aspect is obviously around bringing down the cost of banking, yeah, because at the end of the day, um, that's going to be important. And the, the digital frontier allows banking to be done at a lot cheaper uh, price than than literally bricks and mortar. And we now know that you know. 50% or so of customers are connected you know, now to the internet in some way, shape or form. And, and a growing number of customers actually want to use digital channels, whether it's mobile, whether it's internet. So if you don't have an offering that, that is convenient to them at the right price, offering the right products, you're going to struggle to, be, to remain relevant. I think the other areas of opportunity are around um, what I would call digital sales. Uh, digital sales within Africa is still very low. On average, it's about 4-5%, whereas if you compare to other parts of the world, you can be upwards of 60 to 70% um, of your sales, new sales coming in through digital channels. So I think we're, we're still at the stage where we're doing a lot more transactional type business, which to me is commoditized. I think we have to ask ourselves, how do we move forward <clears throat> with not just digital sales, but proper digital fulfillment? Um, and then obviously, we're, like you indicated earlier, there's the whole um, era of sort of um, uh, customer protection, data protection, how you use that data. Um, and we're seeing a raft of, of, of um, rules and regulations <coughs> that are coming up. And I think the challenge for banks is we, we are already heavily regulated and innovation and regulation sometimes clash. Yeah, so, so when people say, well, banks are not, regu are not innovating fast enough, but the regulator environment is just becoming more complex and we need to make sure it doesn't become dysfunctionally complex holding back innovation. I think when we look at the roles of um, the different players and we look at regulators, they have, they're, they're there to protect the public. Yeah. Then at the same time, if we over-regulate, which I think we're starting to see a little bit of that and that's not necessarily coming from the regulators well it comes from even legislators coming in and saying for example we want interest rate caps yeah to protect customers um, we have to be careful that we don't end up with dysfunctional outcomes where you drive things from a formal system into an informal system yeah because people now can't get the service that they're looking for so somebody comes up and without any form of protections, without form, any form of regulation, you end up in a, in a difficulty. So like in the Kenyan context, when you put in caps, you ended up driving business to Shylocks. Then you've got no regulation and no protection of customers.